So we're going to kick off who should consider enrolling in Medicare. Boom. You know, here we are. Um, we're retired. We have FEHB. So um, what about Medicare A or B or both? Uh, Medicare, what is Medicare Advantage and FEHB bundled together? Medicare Part D and um, FEHB drug coverage, what's that? And then Medicare FEHB, TRICARE for Life, how does that work? So who should consider um, turning on Part A? This is hospital insurance. So this is every single person in the room. So the virtual room, sorry. <laughs> Uh, and so if you're working, hey, I'm working still. So what? If you're working or you're retired, age 65 or above, turn on Medicare A. It's premium free for all of us that have worked at least 10 years. And we all have because we're all retired feds. And, um, and oh, and it's going to be automatic if you go in after the age of 62, you've retired from federal service and you sign up for Social Security and all of a sudden, boom, at age 65, you're going to automatically be enrolled in A. So it starts the first day of the month uh, you turn 65 if you're already enrolled in Social Security at the age of 62, and many of us do that. Um, who should consider delaying? Um, um, uh, enrollment in Part A, and that's a thing. Consider delaying Part A if you're enrolled in a high deductible health plan with a health savings account that's bundled with it. There's some of us feds who are these guys, or, or, or these women, men or women who have this high deductible FEHB plan and it's bundled with a health savings account. I myself am a, dis, um, I'm a, a surviving spouse and um, my uh, my wife did have a health savings account, and so I'm a the, I'm now the, the administrator of that account, and uh, so just pencil that out. There are IRSs. This is not um, Department of Labor saying this. This is not uh, CMS or HHS saying this. This is the IRS. It's a determination made by IRS and in Congress. And so those folks who are the high deductible health plan folks that are bundled with the health savings accounts, you know who you are. There should be a yellow light. Um, but this, I'm, I'm making this, I'm just telling you your rights. So you can't contribute to your HSA once your Medicare coverage begins. So boom, that's the end of the contributions to the health savings account. If you don't stop the HSA contributions at least six months before Medicare enrollment, you're going to incur, I put on my slide may occur, but you know, the IRS is going to know and you're going to get a no. If you'd like to continue contributing to your HSA, you should apply for Medi You shouldn't apply for Medicare, Social Security, or the railroaders shouldn't go uh, turn on their railroad retirement benefits. If you're ineligible for a, an HSA, if ineligible for a health savings account, you can convert it to a health reimbursement arrangement. And I will not go any more into that. This is more of an OPM and personnel um, type of deal um, or health. And I have, and, and quite frankly, Jerry, I haven't seen a single one of the FEHB plans talk about this product here in the West. So, I mean, we're kind of being overly. Okay, who should consider in Medicare Part B? This is the big question. If you're still 65 and working like Peter and you have FEHB, it's going to be to your advantage to delay Part B. This includes your spouse who's covered under your FEHB plan. FEHB remains the primary payer. Your spouse over the age of 60, um, uh, your spouse age 65 or over remains covered under FEHB as the primary payer. You apply for Part B upon retirement. So you enroll in the eight-month special enrollment period. The penalty is waived. But the fine print is, is that you got to get this form, CMS L564, which is a request for employment information, and your employer um, completes it. Good news is that all our agencies they know how to do this. They basically just attest that, yeah, 
Jerry had FEHB. Yep, Peter had F. Yep, Denise had uh, FEHB. It's a very simple process. They're really used. It's just simply um, the HR office, which for the most part, our agencies are now in D.C., they attest to um, that you did have FEHB upon um, upon retirement. And so that gives you the penalty free. It gives you what the security says is the uh, special enrollment period, uh, like a SEP, special enrollment period. Um, hmm. So who... Who should consider enrolling in Medicare Part B yep. Part 2? If you're retired and have FEHB, Medicare Part B may be a good choice for you. You know, again, it's not Peter telling you it's a good choice for you. You can ask all your NARF buddies in the chapter whether it's a good choice or not, but it's really the decision is fundamentally yours. Medicare Part B and FEHB plans combine to provide almost complete coverage Jerry and I saw the FVHB plans in San Luis Obispo brag about how they have total wraparound coverage. You're going to have absolutely no out-of-pocket costs. Everything's going to be, you just show up at the doctor and they're going to take care of you. Show up at the hospital, they're going to take care of you because you have wraparound coverage. That's what they're talking about. Um, FVHB and um, Medicare Part B coordinate benefits. Very, very powerful tool that we need to think about in our retirement years. Um, FEHB plans continue to pay primary uh, uh, primary benefits for prescription Part D or uh, Medicare Part D drugs. So all of us feds who have FEHB in retirement can happily ignore Medicare open enrollment period, which every single pharmacy you're going to be walking in will have a sign. Is that, DA, do you need a prescription drug plan? You can say, no, I have FEHB, and it's for the most part better than any Medicare prescription drug plan that you can possibly tempt me with. Uh, who should consider enrolling in B? Um, so part three, consider, consider part B as it pays for all the costs involved with seeking providers outside of the plans network, okay? This is kind of a power user thing. You will have um, some people you know, I shouldn't promote any one plan over another, but let's say you're in a FEHB HMO, like Kaiser is very popular in Jerry and Mai's area. Um, and they just take FEHB Kaiser. And then they have Medicare Part B on the side. They have not assigned their Medicare B to Kaiser. They keep it on the side. Why do they do that? Because in case they want to do an end run to Mayo Clinic or do an end run to Stanford, or they know they might want to have something out. They want to see a provider outside the plans network and that plan doesn't do stuff. So they want to have a, so this is a power user thing. I'm not promoting it. I'm just saying it's a, it's a, you, it is your right to play a little coy with, um, with it. Um, and you want to consider Medicare Part B as it is required for Medicare Advantage plans and TRICARE for life. So if you are a retired uniformed service person, um, TRICARE is going to send you a very nasty letter. I mean, it's not nasty, but a, a firm letter that if you want to retain your TRICARE for life benefits for you and your, for you, you must turn on Medicare B. And your dependents will get that too as they merrily arrive at the age of 65. TRICARE will know. And um, the TRICARE for life um, beneficiaries do not have the same rights as uh, the rest of us um, um, FEHB beneficiaries. So, but it is required for Medicare Advantage and TRICARE for Life. So I guess I promised I wasn't gonna tell you what to do, but the case for TRICARE for Life, I am telling you what to do, or, or TRICARES. So Medicare Part C, or Medicare Advantage, this is another way um, that you can get Medicare coverage. Um, health plans, have approved. Uh, they, they're approved by Medicare, they're run by private companies, and many have to use networks or doctors or hospitals. You have to use the network and doctor hospital associated with that plan. Some FEHB plans offer Medicare Advantage plans. You can suspend. Now, this is the right of suspension that Jerry asked me to kind of pencil out because the plans will be very fuzzy on this right, and I don't want you to be. So a lot of Bay Area, a lot of folks down in L.A. 
have a huge amount of Medicare Advantage plans to choose from, and they're pretty cheap. It's a market saturated thing, even in Stanislaus County and 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 uh, uh, retired feds in, in Sacramento. Wide variety of Medicare Advantage plans. Um, so you do, as a Fed under that's covered under FEHB, have the right of suspension. And you can re-enroll in FEHB later if you lose or cancel the Medicare Advantage plan. This is to um, allow feds to go into the regular Medicare open market and try it. I just happen to know that the chapter over, uh, a lot of the chapter members in the former um, uh, Walnut Creek chapter, a lot of them did this. They did a, the suspension thing. Um, where they would they would they could be on Kaiser um, Senior Advantage, the regular Kaiser Senior Advantage that's open to anybody any senior in the Walnut Creek area. They suspended their FEHB, and then you know to see how it worked. It ended up being cheaper because they could they could save for the years they were not an FEH where they suspended their FEHB. They're saving their FEHB premium, so that's a right that you have. You can enroll. Um, your FEHB doesn't go away because you suspended it. And you can, um, if you later, if later the plan goes away because of bankruptcy or you lose it uh, for, um, you either lose it or it's canceled, um, cover, uh, you lose the, uh, the Medicare plan coverage. Meaning, you may, let's say you want to move to Reno and there's no plan there, then, uh, then you can turn your FEHB back on. Hey, Peter, this is Pauline. Did you want to take questions only at the end? Or yeah, let me let me power through this and then I'll okay. then I'll go through and, and, and I can go back to the slide and, and when the, uh, that right. way I'll, I'll give plenty of time for questions and answers. Um, so but the fine print. Is that you must wait until the next FEHB open season to re-enroll in FEHB unless you involuntarily lose your MA coverage. You may enroll 31 days before the 60 day after you lose Medicare Advantage plan coverage and your re-enrollment in FEHB will be effective um, the day after um, uh, the day after the Medicare plan coverage ends. So um, lots of fine print there. Sorry about that. Um, suspending FEHB to enroll in Medicare Advantage, you and your spouse can suspend your FEHB coverage. Again, this is a right for us feds on FEHB um, to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. You won't have to pay your FEHB premium. Um, OPM doesn't contribute to your Medicare Advantage plan premium. Okay, so that's all, all out of your pocket. Uh, um, if you want to later re-enroll in the FEHB program, generally you can do so at the next open enroll enrollment season, unless you involuntarily lose the coverage or move out of the Medicare Advantage plan services area. So you know, you move up to Carson City, you're out of here, you're out of the Medicare, but that would have that would trigger it. And the other thing that would trigger it is if the plan became insolvent or got into trouble with CMS and had to go away. So contact your retirement office. Provide them the documentation to suspend your FEHB coverage and enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan is how you do it. Um, for most of us, this will be your retirement office's office of personal management. You know, But if you're still working like me, I have to go call the folks back in DC and tell them this is the hijinks I want to do. Uh, suspension of FEHB is effective the day before the Medicare um, plan, um, Medicare Advantage plan coverage begins. Okay, I'm going to talk real briefly just to make everyone's head spin is a Medicare Part D. I already said that you don't need it, you don't want it, FEHB is better than it, but there is some fine print associated. Medicare Part D, again, this is I'm keeping this within the your rights. It's available to all people with Medicare. It's provided through prescription drug plans, Medicare Advantage prescription drug plans, and then some other Medicare plans. The higher premium for some, it's a higher premium for some who wait to enroll. So you don't have to worry about that because FEHB plans are actuarially equivalent. So you're actually covered by something that's better than Medicare Part B. So you don't have to worry about uh, higher premiums um, waiting to enroll because you have credible coverage. FEHB is what we call creditable coverage. Um, so um, 
so what what would the penalty be if you weren't FEHB? It would be one percent for of the Part D based pre beneficiary premium for every month you could have had Part D but didn't. Again, FEHB people, everyone in this room doesn't have to worry about. It. And it, it is a lifetime penalty, but again, something we don't have to worry. About. But why should anybody? Why should any Fed consider enrolling in Part B? So there are some of us retirees with limited income and resources. And you may consider enrolling in Medicare Part D as you'll get financial assistance. Um, your resources must be limited. And you just start penciling this out on the envelope really quickly. Um, so it's um, basically 14,000 uh, 14, for an individual or um, 29,000 for a married couple living together. The annual income must be limited to 18 grand uh, for an individual or 25 um, for a married couple living together. If the individual has FEHB, they won't likely benefit from um, enrolling in Medicare Part D. Um, and just remember, you can enroll later without a penalty. Um, okay, full disclosure, because half of our NARF members are also TRICARE for life, so I gotta talk about this. If you're retired from the military, you must enroll in Medicare A and B to keep your TRICARE for life benefits. These are all us folks who used to go running to our, our, our bases and get our Medicare, our, our medical benefits from the base, uh, from military medicine and the children and our wives and would get it. So if you're an active duty member, you don't need to have, no, don't need to keep, to have Part B to keep TRICARE. TRICARE actually will already know it, you're actively doing it. But think about it, how many active duty military or uniformed folks are there even in public health service and NOAA, who are 65 and all, you, you, you practically have to be an admiral, you know, a very high ranking or very high, high ranking enlisted ranks might be still off at the age of 65. If you have TRICARE, you don't need to join a Medicare prescription drug plan. If you do, Medicare drug plan pays first, TRICARE pays second. The theme in TRICARE is always pair of last resort. So, Okay, this is the part that Jerry really, we're now we're getting to the bread and butter. He, Jerry really wanted me to talk about this. What about who pays first? So I'm going to go through this grid and hopefully it doesn't make everyone's head spin. But if you and your spouse have Medicare and, so you have Medicare and FEHB, uh, has so the so you if you have FEHB as an active employee, so like myself, I'm an active employee, or my spouse, the primary payer is going to be FEHB. Um, as FEHB as a retired annuitant or spouse, who pays? Medicare. Um, if you're receiving um, workman's compensation, and uh, many of us do have uh, retired from federal service, and they have, so there's a workman's comp out there. Workman's compensation for all the injury-related services, Medicare for other services. So for the uh, re-employed re annuitant, um, if you're employed in a position that conveys FEHB eligibility, then the primary one is FEHB is the pro pay, pays primary. If the em employee in the position does not convey F FEHB eligibility, um, uh, Medicare is primary. And I, putting Jerry on the spot here, have we identified anybody in the West or in California who is employed, a re-employed annuitant, employed in a position that conveys FEHB eligibility? I don't know if that's a thing in in California. Um, I, yeah, I'm not aware of any. Um, no. Okay. I, so, but this is more, I mean, just so you guys know the the rights there are, there's obviously somebody uh, in the nation in, that fits in this category. So um, key points to remember if you have FEHB, which is all of us in this room, Medicare A is not required, but recommended if you're still working and have FEHB. And um, you put a pin, I put a pin in this one, and someone asked me a question: Why? But um, 
contact your health plan when you turn 65 to in order to coordinate. Just let them know. And they're probably already going to know. Like they know my son's age. They know my age very keenly. But, uh, but contact them uh, when you turn 65 to, to in order to start this powerful tool of coordination of benefits. Uh, remember, you can delay Part B with no penalty if you're still employed by Uncle Sam. And uh, Medigap, um, your Medigap policy is a Medigap policy is not needed. Okay. Um, notice I'm not saying not allowed, um, but it is not needed because um, because you you know because Medicare would be paying the claim primarily, and then the RFHB plan would provide the wraparound, so you'd have no out of pocket costs. Medigap would never click in. It would never. Um, Medicare Part D is not needed. Well, sorry about that, folks. A little too excited here. Okay, got the screen back. Okay, so these are some of the resource screens, and hopefully, I will be able to share this, um, this, um, um, these slides with you. And um, so, we have for everybody twenty four hours a day, seven days a week for those sleepless nights. One eight hundred Medicare. You can call them. If the scripts are really good. Ask them the question you have, and um, you know, and and, and the operator will will um you know will serve you or if you need a publication or need anything this is something that congress mandated that cms have just so beneficiaries you know don't have to oh i know i have a medicare handbook here somewhere you can just call with your question and get a straight answer or order something so we have a whole great many of cms publications that many of your chapter benefit officers know about the cms publication section in the cms.gov website so we have actually two websites that are facing towards so Medicare.gov is facing towards the beneficiary or the individual. CMS.gov uh, is more facing towards the institutions, the health plans, the providers, organizations like NARF, and the people who want to help you. Um, so Medicare.gov is our individual or family or uh, caregiver facing site. We have a Medicare publication there. Um, so this is way too much information, but I put it in here because Jerry asked about it. We actually have a contractors who do benefit coordination and recovery. So remember I mentioned about the workman comp guys, or let's say if you are up in the gold country and you fell out and you fell down in front of Walmart and broke your hip and there was an insurance settlement, there's a recovery center, a benefits coordination center and then Medicare secondary payer recovery contractors. And so these are all um, actors in the Medicare business of, of recovering um, money that Medicare in inadvertently paid out that some other organization was supposed to pay. Um, absolutely important number is the social security number. That's their 800 number. Again, that does not work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but it works during business hours. And if I was you, I would wait till around four o'clock and then you get the Hawaii call center. They have the best federal job on the planet. They're in Hawaii and they're able to, um, and they have expert, uh, they're expert employees and they can get you um, set up with what you need with social security appointments or um, publications or, you know, get started on your case. Um, the, the link for all things FEHB is at the OPM website. So as soon as you retire, goodbye agency, hello OPM. So get real familiar with OPM's website. Um, also, I've got some allies and some of them might actually be on the call. And so every, all you chapters um, in around California, um, 
not just 65 and 400, but everybody, um, start having start getting a relationship with your state health insurance assistance programs. And your benefit officers should know should have have them on hotline because they're um, uh, there to help people who are on Medicare and who have Medicare questions. Now, granted, your NARF benefit officer is going to probably know about 20 times more than um, the high cap program, which is called in California, the state health insurance assistance program. But um, they are, I, I do train them in FEHB, Medicare and you and TRICARE and you and VA and you, um, and they're located. And so I would encourage you to um, get to know them and invite them to your luncheons and um, maybe have them talk a little bit about it's kind of nice to have a local Medicare expert who knows things about what um, what uh, Medicare part, uh, well, what's happening with Medicare prescription drug coverage in your county, you know, or what's what's up with the providers, you know. So I was dealing with San Jose; they're they're starting to have shortage of providers. It's hard to find a primary care physician. So, um. And you don't have to worry about doing this little dinosaur, but if you're really high tech, you can take out your cell phone and rate me, um, rate how this is and say, hey, the Peter and Jerry show was great. Um, I'm now going to, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep this share going um, just because I'm gonna get, I'm gonna and I'll turn it over to Martha for some questions and answers. Actually, Pauline is going to do the question. Oh, Pauline, I'm sorry. I'm the it's okay. There you she ready, is. Peter? There she is. All right. First question is, um, my understanding that you can suspend FEHB to get an Advantage plan, but you cannot select a supplemental plan. Well. Hmm. So I'm not sure what they mean. Okay, so the supplemental plan is uh, uh, the Medigap guys. Right. Um, so what uh, what goes on with that? And uh, I'm going to be a little bit of a power user here. Um. Um. So that this right of suspension is really for Medicare Advantage. So that's right. So let's keep it simple for Medicare Advantage. Yes, the right of suspension. Um. However, what the person is pulsing on. Um, is this part here. Uh, remember, Medicare Part C, Medicare Advantage, okay? Um, oh, sorry, I, uh, it was you now. Would you so, like you me should to consider... clarify? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Motion. Denise, is that you? Go ahead and clarify what you're talking yeah. Because my understanding, because I've been doing a lot of research lately because I have to sign up for Medicare within the next less than a year. So um, uh, my understanding is that if you want a supplemental plan or a Medigap plan, then you have to cancel FEHB. You cannot have the supplemental and you can't suspend it. You have to cancel it, but you can suspend it and get it back later if you have an advantage plan. That's what everyone's been telling me. Yes, so, I, so, yeah. so, so you're completely right on that. Um, what um what they're talking about and this uh, and and the agents and people who are not in the know throw around statements like supplement so what what supplemental plan means it's not FEHB it's a Medigap plan um and so there's a lot of agents out there many people many different companies will want to sell you one of these so um it's not illegal to do this, uh, if you're sick, um, um, sorry, um, um, so it's conceivable that you um, sign up for Medicare Advantage under your FEHB, right? So you're just, let's say, Kaiser Senior Advantage, Medicare FEHB. And then you want to be a power user and you just want to have you want to have your Medicare A and B not assigned to Kaiser. So you're you're paying your FEHB premium and you're getting FEHB Kaiser. It is not not illegal for you to take your Medicare A and B and go out and get a Medigap policy, a supplemental policy and do that. However, you're paying a lot of premiums then. 
you're paying a Medicare Part B premium, or you're paying a premium to, let's say, Mutual of Omaha to provide you with a, a, a Medigap insurance. And why are you doing that for? Um, why? So you can go run down to the Mayo Clinic or go to Stanford. You must know there must be you must be in the know of something that you have some special, you know, special medical stovepipe that you're, you're that you're accommodating. So I, I, I don't know if that's illegal in in some areas. Now, if the health insurance agent knows that you have FEHB and you know and Medicare and you've assigned. You're, you're doing coordination of benefit. It is, in fact, illegal for them to sign you up. Um, you know, they're not supposed to like, oh, Jerry, don't worry about your FEHB. I've got this Mutual of Omaha plan for you. And you'll just take Medicare and this. And because you're, you're basically buying, you know, a uh, you're overbuying. So they, they are they are enjoying or doing so. But Denise, yourself, you're in safe harbor. You're, you're basically, your decision is like, you're turning on Medicare B, uh, you're, you're in retirement, then you just got to decide which Medicare Advantage plan you're going to um, um, combine your benefits with. And, and that's that's the decision. Did that answer your question, Denise? Well, basically, I just wanted people to know that you can only suspend for an advantage plan, you can't suspend if you want to do a Medigap plan. Right. Like you can't say I'm not. It doesn't make sense to do both. It doesn't to me. It doesn't make sense to have FEHB and Advantage or FEHB and a supplemental plan. So you'd want to suspend FEHB because you're just paying for extra insurance. But right. you would suspend it for the Advantage plan if you want to try Advantage and say I like that bet. I want to see if I like that better blah, blah, and then you don't lose it. But if you decide you want to try a Medigap plan, you know, which is just supplemental insurance through Medicare, um, if you wanted to try that, you would then have to cancel and you can never go back to FEHB if you did that, because once you cancel it, you can't get it back. So that's all I was trying to say. That's a super good point. Yeah, uh, Peter. Um, and I, never, I, never, everybody never use the word cancel around FEHB. OPM will gladly <laughs> cancel <laughs> it. Uh, just use the word suspension. I'm going to use my right for suspension because um, I'm signed up for a Medicare Advantage. Denise, yeah, would, would, 10 would points, you, Denise. Uh, this is Mina. Can you elaborate on that again? Because I was told that as a federal retiree, I cannot have advantage plan I, because we have original Medicare AB and the FEHB. If I go with advantage plan, I, so it's suspension, so I can ch try. I can tr change it to now advantage plan and not uh, something that provided with the FEHB or I'm a little confused now. Yeah, I, Peter, I, would you go, uh, and, and you didn't say it real loud, which is that the uh, FEHB plans now, a lot of them have their own uh, advantage plan. Um, and a lot of people are taking those advantage programs and then getting reimbursement back uh, toward their uh, payment of Medicare Part B, and uh, rather than going the suspension route. So I, I, I don't think we've talked about this enough in this group. So one more question before Nina, you go. Oh, so, yeah, go. After, I also heard that you have to have a Medicare B and with the advantage plan. That's another thing is confusion. You must have it. Otherwise, it's, it's a no-go. That's you, right. You can't even sign up for it. So still you are paying two premium, Medicare so, B premium and Advantage premium. So what happens with this is the, so let's stay focused on the right of suspension. If you want to um, get rid of one premium, which is the FEHB premium, you have the right to suspend it and try Medicare Advantage plan on which, but, but for that, you must have Medicare A and B. So you have the Medicare B premium, 
that's going to be coming out of your social security or you pay it quarterly or monthly. And then you'll have the plan, the Medicare Advantage plans premium, which is variable. It's going to be whatever they're, they, what they charge for the county you're in. Um, if you pencil that out, you will notice that it's probably, it's a lot cheaper than if you pay all that, because you could do that too. You can pay, you can keep your FEHB if they have a FEHB um, product, you would have FEA, you would pay your FEHB premium. You would have your, you would pay your Medicare Part B premium and mm -hmm. the FEHB um, um, Medicare Advantage plan uh, premium. So you're paying lots, you're paying three premiums. So the right of suspension allow, mm -hmm. it, it, it was actually kind of an in, in fairness to Fed, to retired feds that you would at least just save the medic, the, you would just save the uh, FEHB, uh, having to pay the FEHB premium. But again, remember it's um, um, it, it it's 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 I also wanted to give retirees the flexibility to do it, and then you know number one to save money, but number two, if the plan went away, um, you could then come back to FEHB, or if you moved out of state, you could get your FEHB back. So that's the whole swing between suspension. So. Hopefully I've given you enough. Um... Uh, Peter, <laughs> please, if you would address the fact that many people currently have Part B of Medicare, have FEHB, and they have the Medicare Advantage plan with that provider. Um, and at least in my case, I don't pay for the Part B of Medicare because it gets reimbursed by the provider. Yeah, so that Jerry, what Jerry's talking about is actually a very big, uh, big question because a lot of folks are like, how do I get that action? So the plan, the FEHB plans that have Medi you know, that have Medicare Advantage product, they're getting paid by three people: Jerry, uh, OPM, and um, and Medicare. Um, so uh, and so. Um, they're able to offer to Jerry, um, oh, we'll, we'll, we will pay back your Medicare Part B premium. You know, but it's this much a month, we're going to pay you up to, you know, 120 a month or 150 a month, we will uh, we'll pay just so you sign with us. Um, so that's, they're allowed to do that. That's completely legal. It's very attractive. Um, you will see the plans at open enrollment events talk largely about it. You know, we'll 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 reimburse you back your Medicare Part B if you sign with us. So this is something that also happens in other other FEHB plans. Uh, we had them fighting each other in San Luis Obispo about this very account. Every single plan was saying we'll rebate you back fifty dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred dollars. Uh, you know, on your on your Medicare Part B, that is allowed, um, and um, just be aware for it and shop. Um, yeah, it basically means could, uh, you have to look at their policies because they're all different, and you basically have to make changes in your current FEHB to become involved in this Medicare Advantage with the payback of the premiums of for Part B of Medicare to some extent and to full extent in other cases. So Peter, this is Pauline. Uh, one of the questions that might fit into this discussion is, it's confusing uh, for Michelle, it's confusing because Medicare Part C Advantage plan is different than what an FEHB plan might call a Medicare Advantage plan. So Does that makes sense. Sort of. Um, Medicare. So so Medicare Advantage is a term that is used with um, Medicare um, to everyone who has Medicare Part A and B. They can enroll in a Medicare. Uh, Advantage plan October fifteenth to December seventh. Um, our FEHB plans have the flexibility to offer, and I'm going to pick on Kaiser because they're the one I'm most familiar with in California. 
will have a FEHB Medicare Advantage plan. And you uh, and I would say any Fed would do well to talk to that, to, to call that phone number because it's a separate call center and it deals with people who have bundled their FEHB benefit with the um, with with uh, with uh, with, uh, with uh, their Medicare Advantage product, so it's a different it's a different thing. You're not going to find that on Medicare Plan Finder. You're not going to find that uh, in the if you call the regular Medicare Advantage call center um, for Kaiser. You're going to have to get to them through the Kaiser FEHB Medicare Advantage 800. That's correct. So it's very important. Pauline, that was a super good question. 10 points, whoever asked it. It's and so 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 us feds need to stay keep our eyes on our own plate on 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 the FEHB plate and call those 800 numbers because that because in the meantime, the plans are doing all this thing during during FEHB open enrollment. They're also doing the general Medicare audience, um, the general population and those those call centers don't know anything about FEHB and coordination of benefits or anything like that. So you need to call the the FEHB the plan the FEHB plan people, the, their their call center, and you'll know you'll know exactly who they are. That, that's how that, that's those are the those are the folks who mail you things. They're the ones who give you your uh, explanation of benefits. They're the ones who, um, you know, come to these meetings uh, in next month, starting next month. Uh, there's going to be a series of luncheon meetings throughout the state where FEHB plans come and talk about this is what we have to offer. So, um, yeah, so let me go to Steve. He had a number of questions, um, and I think they're all sort of related. Um, I, I think the easy one that he asked is uh, where can he get some information about suspension uh, of your FEHB? Well, um, probably the best spot is um, there's a um, OPM has a super good um, all things um, all things FEHB and they have a Q&A on the suspension right. Okay. Um, that's where I that's the where I um, got this and let me show you the website there. Oh shoot. And then while you're looking for that, the next question he asks is if FEHB is the primary, is Medicare the secondary? So yes. if you keep your FEHB. Yes. Okay, there it was. Sorry, it took me a while to find it. But so this this, this is something we should all have a link to. <laughs> <laughs> is federal employee health benefits at OPM. It's just it's just a, a treasure trove of information, and they've got a really good fact sheet that has questions and answers on all these questions. And you know what about the right of suspension? And 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 and, you, and again, I can't reiterate that. Don't use quit. Use the word suspension. I'm going to use my right of suspension. So, Steve, so did I get, uh, Martha, did I get that question? Or Pauline, did I get that question? Uh, sorry. I, yeah, I think so. And Steve also asked them, if you have FEHB, is that the primary? Even if you signed oh. up for Medicare, or does Medicare take over primary? Um, yes. So um, I'll go back to this. Um, so this is the, the primary sheet. Um, so this is for all the folks who are retired. So you have you have FEHB as an active employee or spouse, the primary care is FEHB. So once you retire, it becomes Medicare. Yes. Okay. Um, and then somebody, William asked, um, if I have FEHB, why do I need part B? No. Well, that's the question of the day. Yeah. Um, that's what, 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 you know, that's what this, this, this is what, Jer why Jerry said we need to kick this around a little bit. Um, so there are many people in the Bay Area, many, many NARF members in California who bite the bullet, say, I am going to exercise my right. I'm going to have Medicare Part A because in case something bad happens, you know, Medicare Part A uh, will, will help with, uh, 
you know, the hospitalization, um, home health, and uh, rehabil rehabilitation. Um, and uh, I will not take Part B because I don't have to. And I will just pay um, my FEHB and I will just have two premiums then, FEHB, that's it. Oh, uh, well, uh, the, the FEHB plan period, that's it. So I'm not gonna take B. Well, I, I just oh, I, I just have some feedback. Again, I'm not telling you what to do here, but I am the, my, my initial take on it is that remember, 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 FEHB is designed from OPM and the federal government to handle workers are we all workers we're not young anymore and so the look at the benefit plan in your explanation of benefits what does it cover it's pretty good at covering a working adult you know um but then if you look at it um it doesn't cover it, it's 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 largely silent. Uh, the FEHB plans are largely largely silent on nursing home care for rehabilitation, or it's largely silent for home health care benefit. Um, you know, basically, it's designed. Uh, you know, I, I I had a friend who had that had this happen. He was actually still working. He actually had Part A. Uh, he had a stroke while he was while he was working, um, and. You know, the first thing the hospital says is like, well, um, we'd like to send you home or, or to a rehab facility, um, but sorry, um, your your plan doesn't cover that. He goes, what do you mean? I got, you know, and I had to remind the discharge planner that he had Medicare A and said it certainly does cover it. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's um, there, there's, a, there's a reason to have uh, Medicare A. And just remember that Medicare B, that, you know, the FEHB plan works great for people who are actually working, but it's not designed for people who are actually retired like us. It's it's uh, it's a slightly different OPM is, you know, it's it's worker insurance, so it's it's made for a slightly different uh, population and age group than we are. So that's why you want to have, you know, after the age of sixty five, you want to have uh, you want to have the benefits that uh, are associated with Medicare, which is designed for you know, uh, people over the age of 65. So it's, just, and it's also, uh, but there are many people who do, who do that. They just stick with their FEHB plan. But I do, I do remind them that if that that's a good strategy, bite the bullet, but take A, take A, uh, take Medicare A, and then, um, and, and then see how it works. Um, when you do finally want to turn on B, it's not over, it's not all lost, but um, you will be getting a 10% penalty for every year you could have had B um, and didn't take it. But Pauline, that's a very common, uh, you know, throughout yeah. the duration, that's a very common thing. Uh, we've been in meetings where people stood up and said, I'm not taking it because I am I like my health plan and it's worked all these years. And I, I agree, but I, I would yeah. just add for consideration that, it, that the FEHB plan that worked all throughout your whole life works great, but you're now, uh, things change after the age of 65. And I, I think too, there's been a lot of discussion about HMOs and HMOs um, probably lend themselves uh, toward not having the need for the Part B of Medicare. However, you you know, if you move all of a sudden, uh, to an area where the HMO is not covered um, or, or does not have a plan available, then you might end up in something like Blue Cross or GEHA well, or something like that. And now you say, gee, I could do a lot better if I had these Part B uh, benefits. And so I, I you know, I, I, I think there's considerations that everybody has. And, you know, I've heard people say, well, I'm not moving. And so I'm perfectly comfortable with the HMO and I'll stick with it and I'll die with it. Yeah. So, so Jerry, that's the, that's only the FEHB HMO. Yeah. So, so you can't even get into that, that HMO with, um, you know, the Medicare Advantage HMOs, you can't even enter that without Medicare Part B turned on. So right. by definition, when you don't have Medicare Part B, there will be no coordination of benefits with your FEHB plan. Their Medicare will not coordinate. 
dollars. Well, I also think you have to think about if someone's going to reimburse you completely for your Part B of Medicare, mm -hmm. and while you may not be using it right now, but you end up later wanting it, you don't have the penalty, and it was paid for by somebody else anyway. So uh, to me, there's not a whole lot of risk in that. So there's still about three more questions I, I need please, to please. ask you, Peter. Um, I have one from Jonathan. I know your hand's been up for a while. And then Andrea had a question. Um, and Sandra just asked a question I think fits in right here is, can you confirm that the 10% penalty for not signing up for Part B, I would assume, is calculated only against the base rate and not on the IRMAA? You're ahead of me. That's a social security question. I have to go back and look at that one. So if you give me a little moment. To, I, I would get, you know, give me some time to go back and look at what's the, what's the rate. Um, I still think you get Irma. I mean, I, I'll look, I'll, I'll have to I'll look on that. Okay. So can I go to the next question? Yes. All right. Find so, it. Did, 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 did John, was that John's question? That was yeah, no. That so was... I have a no. Wait, 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 John. Let John go. Wait, I gotta okay. tell him who. That's Sandra's question. Okay. Okay, and then um, yeah. Well, I'll let John go. Then I have a question from Andrea. Okay. Um, I thought you made a very good point about Medicare Advantage and FEB, because if somebody enrolls in Medicare Advantage, and if on their own initiative they cancel the plan midway through the the feb um you know open season they have to wait for the next one however if the medicare advantage uh, you know goes broke or something like that and it's no fault of the person that had the medicare advantage then they can immediately re-enroll in feb i hope i'm right on that yes yes very good point. Uh, well, and it's also what's what's actually more common is that we move. You know, we move. Um, something bad happens, and we have to move uh, to okay. to near a child or near a caregiver, and all of a sudden, you know, there's a new boss in town, and and you're moving to Reno, Dad, or you're moving to you're you're moving to Indiana, Dad, and and all of a sudden, well, hold it, my my FE, my plan doesn't work over there. Well, it does. It will. Uh, movement moves and then insolvencies are, are 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 a dispensation for that. So good point, John. So Andrew's question, and I think um, she meant I'm enrolled in the FEHB Kaiser Standard Option Two, and I'm guessing that's Senior Advantage Two. Yeah, um, Andrew can clarify that and get reimbursed for my Part B. Have I assigned my Medicare to Kaiser, yes. or can I use my Medicare outside of Kaiser? You, you took the deal. You so she deal. has to use Kaiser, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, okay. you're, 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 you signed up for the Wombo combo. So you have okay, you're, you're you're taking your 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 taking your Medicare A and B, and you're 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 getting the uh, you're getting the um, Kaiser plan. Kaiser Medicare Advantage FEHB plan, and you're taking the check. Um, that Jerry was talking about. Um, so you're all in. Congratulations. And uh, um, and then the next question is, I heard that I'm not technically in Part C, because it's not a Medigap program, right? Uh, Medigap is not a Part C. Part C plans okay. are Medicare Advantage, and actually the employer group plans like the FEHB plans and CalPERS and, and those uh, plans are that that they are under Part C rules, and so technic. I mean, but I wouldn't worry about. I mean, uh, it, it it is so when you but when you when you take your like for example like my last example when you do the you know the senior Medicare advantage. Kaiser Senior Advantage FEHB plan, um, that does uh, that's under the that is under the uh, under uh, under the. What do you call it? Under the rubric of of Medicare Part C, uh, Medigap Medigap is not necessary. Even though you might hear me talk about a, a, a Medigap plans, 
they more co they more do benefits with uh, their product that's associated with regular Medicare, traditional Medicare fee for service, Medicare A and B, and Medicare Part uh, B. So Medigap is is generally not um, considered a plus a plus C plan. Okay, so I may have spoken. So Andrea is asking, I think she's into Kaiser Senior Advantage part, uh, senior, whatever. And so she's got Kaiser, she's got the Medicare Part B, they're reimbursing her. So she's not technically in Part C. Well, could she could te actually technically she is in Part C. She's a you know, she's in a Part C plan, which is which happens to be the uh, Kaiser. Advantage um senior advantage mm -hmm. dash fehb so it's a, uh, but only feds can get into that you know right, right, right so i don't you know but we're generally when you talk about part c plans anyone with medicare a and b can can uh, that live in the county can get into a medicare part c plan or a medicare advantage plan um but um there's a subset for us feds under part c which allows if you know uh, that if 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 OPM approves them, like Kaiser example, Kaiser Senior Advantage FEHB. I, I I know I'm getting into different pots, but yeah, that, that would in some ways be in a Part C pot. I don't know if it matters. Um, yeah, it shows up on your uh, the information they provide to you that it's a C plan. Because then, because then they're they're under a bunch of legal oblig notification obligations. They yeah, have to yeah. Tell you this. That's what they do is notify. And that's us. That's us at CMS making them do that. So sorry for all the paperwork. And then they after after you go visit for such and such a procedure or such and such a visit, they've got to mm -hmm. they got to tell you this is what happened. This is what you pay. So they they need. There's a whole series of regulations or mm -hmm. and protections. And you wonder why? Why didn't they just save the mail? Why do they do all this? Well, it's it's us. We we make them do it. I don't know about everyone else, but I think my head is exploding at this point. Aren't, don't we live in a great <laughs> country where we have so many choices? <sighs> Peter, did you want to give your uh, email address? Yeah. Um, Put it in the chat. Okay. That's all the questions we had on chat, Peter. So if you just put it there so that if, if someone wants to get into something very specific, and I know sometimes you work with people who get into very specific situations. You can also find Peter on FedHub too. Yeah. Um, but on hey. FedHub, don't talk about your personal uh, situation. There's way too many people on FedHub will we'll talk about. <laughs> That's I've true. Got, That's a public hosting. You're right. Yeah, I've got I've got dial. What's the best dialysis dialysis facility? I just you know my kids. <laughs> just, I'm like, ah. <laughs> okay, I'm putting my email there, everybody, and you can um, you know this is the the company email and what what I what I generally do, Jerry, is that when I get a lot of questions. And I get a lot of questions from people, you know, right at, at, at pain points of their of their Medicare life and of their FEHB life. It's usually when in, during transitions, like something bad happened and mm -hmm. they need a home health care or they need I see. Um, you know, they need they need a there's a transition happening with them or their spouse. And so what I end up doing is uh I take the question and run it up the flagpole. And uh, and so I usually get you know try to get something in paper, you know some a paper answer for the person. So I had a I had an issue with uh, you know a per uh, you know a, a person who was in a in a, in a long term care situation and was had some Medicare questions and we got some quick we got some quick work for it. So feel free to ask me your question. Okay, great. Yeah, so just, Thanks so much, so, Peter. Yeah. So Peter dot Bauer at cms dot hhs dot gov. Yeah, 